I took this exercise from the following book, uh, Separation Process Principle from CEDAR, third edition, is example 3.17, in which we're going to be working with mass transfer coefficients in the packed absorption tower, mostly with film theory, which is what we have been studying so far. Remember that we are processing a gas, which in this case has sulfur dioxide and air. Actually, we can assume this is mostly air and the liquid solvent, which is water. We are going to have this in a packing, so definitely going to have a lot of uh, area of interchange for the mass transfer. At a location in the tower, so they don't tell you where, we're just going to assume that this is the height of the tower and in a given point, we don't know the point. We have the following flux, which is Na, actually NSO2, and it's given in kilomole meter square hour. At the two phase interface and bulk phase, oh, okay, let me show you this. Remember, we have been working a lot with the gas phase and the liquid phase and the solute that goes from the gas phase to the liquid phase. Now, this is the interface and this is our bulk conditions and this is the film. So what's stating here, the liquid phase mole fractions in the interface, this one right here, and in the bulk phase, this one right here, are as follows. So the concentration here is, well, technically speaking, the molar concentration, 0 0.0025 in the interface, and in the bulk phase, 0 0.0003. Great. The accepted diffusivity is given as follows, which I'm pretty sure this is a negative sign, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 centimeters square per second. And the main question will be determine the mass transfer coefficient, Kc, which is great because once we have this one, uh, we can perform further studies, further equipment design for these packed bed absorption towers. And B will be calculate the corresponding film thickness, which I don't know if it has an actual uh, a uh, practical approach, but this will be mostly theoretical. We want to see how uh, large or how big is the film thickness. And interestingly, we can neglect the bulk flow effect because we have dilute solution. Dilute because these are very, very small. Anyways, let's continue with our analysis. Assume that this can be modeled with original film theory. And for me, it makes a lot of sense because First, we don't have that much information on the gas phase. Actually, we have no data at all. We don't know the partial pressure. We don't know total pressures. We are not given the temperature whatsoever. So definitely we're going to focus on the liquid. And if this is true, we gotta assume that there is a film. Assume steady state, of course. And this is a dilute case, meaning that we can ignore bulk properties. Why can we say so? Because we have very low amounts of uh, molar fraction of the sulfur dioxide. And what we are doing here is, okay, I have my molar fraction here and I have my molar fraction in the interface and we have no data of the partial pressure of our gas nor of our total gas, but still we can model the film. Remember that we're going to focus our attention on the liquid phase. And for the letter A, the mass transfer coefficient, we can assume the following. In order to calculate Kc, we will need, actually, let me go. In order to calculate Kc, we know that we need the driving force, which is concentration of SO2 in the interface minus concentration of SO2 in the bulk phase. And unfortunately, we don't have such concentrations, so I have one or two options. Either I calculate individual concentrations or I simplify my life and take out concentration as follows. So essentially I take, because I know that concentration, total concentration times the interface equals the concentration of A in the interface. So essentially what I'm doing is just taking concentration, total concentration of the liquid out. So I now have molar fractions which were given to me which is great, but we need to calculate this concentration. And before we continue, let me go back. 
we're going to do the following concentration of the solution equals the total amount of moles of the solution which is solute plus mole of solvent divided by the total volume in liters so one thing here and mo in most cases but actually here is very uh, straightforward is that the amount of solute can be ignored because it's very very small so technically speaking i can calculate only moles of solvent divided by the volume and the moles of solvent solvent is water and unfortunately we are not given temperature you can see here we're not given pressure nor temperatures so you can either go and check out on your books and reference at what value of diffusivity of sulfur dioxide in water we have this diffusivity typically they would tell you 25 15 celsius i don't know or we can assume that because this is water uh, the density is not going to change that much one gram per milliliter is accepted and because we need liters i'm going to change 1000 grams per liter is the density of water now for concentration we need moles not mass so i need to change this mass and we do so mass divided by molecular weight molecular weight of water is 18 grams and i get this value and I can leave it as it is, or because we are already using centimeters to the second power, why not change to cubic centimeters? So this is essentially one cubic centimeter equals one milliliter. Therefore, 1000 cubic centimeters equals 1000 milliliters, which means one liter. And performing this, we get the following concentration. 5.55 times 10 to the minus 2 mole per cubic centimeters. And now what I'm going to do is just solve for this uh, mass transfer coefficient, which will mean divide by concentration and these molar fractions. The molar flux, I have it, but I have uh, some units which are not that common or at least uh, not convenient for us. So I'm going to change kilomole to mole. So kilomole changes. Uh, the mole will cancel each other. I have hours changed to seconds. Seconds will remain. Uh, I change meters to the second power and I change centimeters, meaning that I remain with centimeters per second. And now I perform all the numerical data, which is essentially this part right here and the molar fractions, which are dimensionless. And I get the following, Kc equals 6.14 times 10 to the minus 3 centimeters per second. So this is our first question right here. And now the important part right here, guys, is actually calculating the film thickness. This is very common for film theory. We want to calculate the uh, thickness, so I need to solve for the thickness. Uh, remember for this specific case when we can ignore bulk properties dilute cases we can assume the following the mass transfer coefficient equals to the diffusivity divided by the film thickness if you don't remember where we got this go back to film theory and then i substitute here remember this was to the minus fifth and this is kc value which we just got right here and centimeters Cancel with cubic centimeters, seconds with seconds, we remain with the following 0 0.0028 centimeters. I am going to change this to millimeters, and as you can see, it's also very small, so it's even smaller than a millimeter. So that's why film theory might be not the most convenient case because those uh, film layers are very small, very hard to actually uh, measure concentrations and so on. So from now on, we're going to see other theories that can uh, improve this type of models. Okay, so that's all. We have the length of the film and we have the mass transfer coefficient.